All right, we're going to fly through a quick lesson here on exponents and radicals. It's going to go pretty fast, um, but again, hopefully all of this is nothing more of a review from what you've learned in Algebra and even in Algebra 2. Um, real quick, let's make sure we understand the basic rules of what an exponent is. So if we have a to the m, that basically means we have tons and tons and tons of a's being multiplied m times. So we would have m of these a's, whatever that is. Let's also make sure we understand negative exponents. Remember, negative exponents have nothing to do with negative numbers. So a to the negative m simply means that this repeating a, much like up here, would be on the denominator of a fraction. So it would be 1 over a to the positive m, which would be 1 over a times a times a, again, m times. And having negative exponents is um, bad math grammar, um, so we try to avoid it as much as we can. So final answers, we usually try to make sure there's no negative exponents. So let's fly through the um, rules real quick. The first rule when dealing with exponents is that if you are multiplying with the same base, base a, base a, you can add the exponents. So it'd be a to the m plus n. So a real quick example here, if we had x to the seventh times x to the third, we have a total of 10 x's, seven here, three here, seven plus three is 10, x to the 10th. Also can work with negatives if we have x to the seventh and x to the negative three. Again, you could treat this as one over x to the third, or you can simply add them. Seven plus negative three would be x to the fourth. And since that's a positive exponent, we would leave it alone. Second major rule here is with division. If you have the same base on top, same base on the bottom, you could subtract the exponent. So it'd be a to the m minus n. So do a quick example. If we had, uh, let's see here, let's use y. y to the tenth over y to the third. We would just subtract 10 minus 3 is 7. So we have 10 y's on top, 3 on the bottom. There's only one term on top here, one term on the bottom. No plus signs, no minus signs. So 3 of the y's on top would cancel, which is where we get the y to the seventh from. Be careful, though, because if we did it like this, with the y to the 3 on top, y to the 10 on the bottom, again, you could just use the idea that three of these y's on the bottom are going to cancel, leaving seven y's on the bottom, or three minus ten is y to the negative seven, and then we say, wait a minute, we don't like that negative exponent, so we'd put one over y to the seventh as our final answer. All right, next rule, number three here um, would be that any value raised to the zero power is always one. Um, anything to the zero is always one, no matter what. Easy, easy, easy. Number four here, we have a times b in parentheses with an exponent outside the parentheses. Basically, that exponent goes to both of those. That means we have m a's and m b's just like that. Um, be careful, I want to just quickly show you, there's no parentheses, like 3x squared. That means there's just 3 and then xx, 2x's, 3 times x times x. The 2 does not go to 3 because there's parentheses. Whereas if there were parentheses around both of them, then all of a sudden we have 3 squared, 2 3's, and we also have x squared, which would shorten to 9x squared, obviously. So those parentheses do make a huge difference. Um, we also have the next rule, which is a power to a power. So if we have a to the m raised to the n, then that is when you multiply. You have a to the m times n. So a quick example of that, if we have x to the third, raised to the sixth. Think about that. We have x, x, x on the insides. That's three x's six times. That's obviously a total of 18 x's, x to the 18th. We could also do it with negative exponents. We got y to the negative two raised to the third. Again, we have multiplying. We get y to the negative six, but wait a minute. We don't like leaving negative exponents, so that's one over y to the sixth should make complete sense. Um, we also have the same rule right here. I'll throw it up here. Rule number six, the same rule with division. If I have a over b 
to the M. Again, because it's in parentheses, the A gets the M, and so does the B. So A to the M over um, B to the M. Now be careful. Again, this is all implying. Notice through none of these problems has there been a plus sign. It's all been one term, one term on the top, one term on the bottom, or one term inside the parentheses. So I quickly want to um, kind of go over here what I'm talking about. So let me kind of stop with those rules real quick. This is pretty important here. If I have x plus 3 squared, now all of a sudden I have two terms in here. That does not mean x squared plus 3 squared. That's not what the rule says. The rule said if it's x times 3, then it's x squared 3 squared. But this is a plus. That means this is a quantity. This is two terms, so we have no idea what this number is until somebody tells us what x is. So this would literally mean x plus 3 times x plus 3, and then we can go ahead and FOIL that out and get x squared. On the inside, we get a 3x. On the outside, we would get a 3x. On the final last terms, we get a 9, so we'd get x squared plus 6x plus 9. So please do not confuse this and think that that rules what we stated earlier. There's a plus sign there. Two terms makes it completely different. When there's only one term in here, then the two can go to everything. But there's two different terms here. It does not work that way. So that's an important rule. We want to make sure everybody knows, please. All right, moving on. Um, we can do some quick uh, reduction rules here. Um, for example, we want to reduce uh, a quantity here. So here's a quick example. So we have uh, negative 3, a, b to the fourth, all in parentheses, times 4, a, b to the negative 3. All right, so this, these are multiplying. No, you know, it's a term times a term. I don't know plus signs in here, anything like that. There's nothing outside the parentheses that I need to handle first. So basically, I can start multiplying. I got a negative 3 times a 4 is negative 12. I got 1a here, 1b here. So it's a total of a squared. a times a is a squared. Now I got these b's, same base. So what do I do with the exponents? I add them. So 4 plus negative 3 is 1. So I have b to the first, or you don't necessarily have to write that one right there. But that would be your final answer. Uh, we could do a second example here, where we have something like 2x. Sorry, my handwriting is getting a little sloppy. I'll try to be neater. We got 2 x squared y all raised to the third times 4xy to the seventh. Now, we have to take care of this 3 first. We cannot multiply these 3's because we cannot multiply these terms together because we got this 3 right here. There's nothing right here, so I don't have to worry about it, but this guy I do have to worry about. There's only one term in here, one term. 2x squared y is one term. Remember, terms are anything separated by plus sign, so there's no plus sign in there. So now that means I have to do 2 to the third. 2 to the third is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. x, that's already x squared three times. That's multiplying. 2 times 3 is 6. And then there's y to the first right here, so 3 times 1 is 3. Now I can bring in the 4xy to the seventh. Now I can start multiplying. 8 times 4 is 32 x, 6x is 1x is here, that's x to the 7th, 3 and 7 for the y's, y the 3rd, y the 7th is a total of y to the 10th. So that is um, some quick combining rules right there so that um, you guys know how to do that. We can do one more here with um, some division here. So we got 5x to the 3rd divided by y all to the second power. So remember, one term in here. No plus sign, no minus sign, one term. So everybody gets this too. So 5 squared is 25. 3 x's squared would be x to the 6, because we got 3 x's taken twice, x to the 6. And then it even goes to the bottom with the y squared. Um, the last thing we want to go over is just some quick ones with uh, subtraction or some negative exponents. So we got 12 a to the third, b to the negative four, divided by four a to the negative two, uh, b. So first thing we can do is these are just whole numbers. Divide them. Twelve divided by four, three. No big deal. Next we got same base. What we do here is remember, it's just subtract. Include the negative. Don't ignore it. So three minus negative two. 
3 minus negative 2 is actually going to turn into 3 plus 2, which is 5. So we have a to the fifth. Negative 4 minus 1. Negative 4 minus 1. This is really a 1 right there. Negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. So we have b to the negative 5. Now, we don't want to leave our answer like that because this b has a negative exponent. So he is going to move to the bottom. The 3a to the fifth will stay on top but the b will move to the bottom with the positive 5. So watch out for problems like that with negative exponents. All right, next we want to quickly, very quickly, look at um, square roots and radical rules kind of uh, idea here. Um, just remember that um, uh, square roots and any power roots could also be looked at as fractions. So the square root of x could be looked at as x to the 1 half power. Uh, we could do the cubed root of x that would be x to the one-third power. Or if we had like the cubed root of x squared, that would be x to the two-thirds power. Again, two is a power, three is a root. Roots on the bottom, powers on top. So that's why the power, or I'm sorry, the power of two is on top. The root of three would be on the bottom. So don't forget about using those rules right there as well. Hopefully you guys all know how to reduce radicals. For example, reducing something like 48, the square root of 48 is not a perfect number, but 48 is 16 times 3. So now the 16 can come out as a 4, so I get 4 radical 3 as a final answer. We need to reduce all square roots in this class. I'm not going to spend a lot more time on reducing square roots. Hopefully that's something very easy for you guys to do. The only other thing I want to talk about real quick is what we call rationalizing the denominator. Anytime we have a radical in the denominator, we want to get rid of it. So for example, if I have 3 over the square root of 5, I do not want to leave that as a final answer. So I want to rationalize. Rationalizing the denominator means getting rid of square roots. So something like this, I just multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 5. Now the square root of 5 divided by the square root of 5 is equal to 1. So I'm really multiplying by 1, which according to our rules is not changing anything. So on top, I get 3 radical 5. On the bottom, you could look at this in several different ways. You could look at radical 5 times radical 5 as radical 25, which is a perfect 5. That's the idea. Is the, the rule is that the radical x times radical x, as long as these values are the same, you just get x. Um, if you did something like radical 3 times radical 2, you'd get radical 6, but nothing you could reduce with that. But obviously, that's the reason why we chose radical 5. Let's do a couple more here. If I have 2 over 5 radical 7. Now again, I don't. this 5 is fine. It's the radical 7 I don't like, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by radical 7. On top, I get 2 radical 7. On the bottom, leave the 5 alone for a second. Radical 7 times radical 7 is radical 49. The square root of 49, or radical 49, is 7 times the 5 makes 35. So that's where that comes from. Again, the radical 7's cancel and just get 7 times the 5 that was there makes the 35. We also need to talk about reducing when you have um, two terms on the bottom. So something like 2 over 3 plus radical 7. Again, there's two terms down here. One, of course, is a radical and one's not. This is a little bit trickier. We need to multiply by what's called the conjugate, which would be 3 minus radical 7. And you're going to see why in one second here. Now again, oh, minus radical 7. This is still 1, so I'm not really changing anything. But on top, I got 2 times 3 minus radical 7. On the bottom, I have a 2 terms times 2 terms. So I got to get end up with 4 terms here. 3 times 3 is 9. Outside, I get minus 3 radical 7. Inside, I get plus 3 radical 7. On the ends, I get a minus 7. Once again, radical 7 and radical 7 is radical 49, which is 7. Notice these terms cancel, which is exactly why I chose to multiply by the conjugate, which if this is a plus, I use the minus. So on the bottom, I get 9 minus 7, which is just 2. So I get 2 over 3 minus radical 7 over 2. And this doesn't happen too often, but this works out really nice here, where the 2's end up canceling. It doesn't always work that way, but it did there. So my final answer would be 3 minus radical 7. All right, and that is it for exponents and radicals.